Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and good evening. This is Bishop Michael Anthony coming to you from the Heart of God Family Worship Center, where we do life here in the great city of Pottstown, Pennsylvania, here on the corner of Hanover and Beach, 201 North Hanover Street. We're excited to have the opportunity to uh, be able to share the Word of God with you tonight. Welcome to Heart to Heart Midweek Service, where intimacy happens. This is our midweek service. We're excited about what God is doing in your life. Listen, I want to talk to you tonight. I want to talk to you tonight about a couple of things. Tonight's title, of course, that we're in the series, I'm on my way to a win. And if you're watching me right now and you're 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 tuning in as you begin to tune in, tune in and you begin to hear uh, this broadcast begin to air for you, I want you to I want you to put in the hashtag I'm winning right now. It's a winning season. <clears throat> It's a winning season. I'm winning right now. Say something with a win in it, all right, because you're on your way to a win. You're not, you're not running this race to lose. You're running this race to succeed, and God has success opportunities and blessing and breakthrough and promotion and increase and opportunities and all kinds of things that are here available to us. He does not make promises without giving us the breakthrough for the with that that goes along with the promise. So before you get before we get started, I need everyone that can. First of all, if you are a first time guest with us, I kind of got off onto a little tangent. But if you are a first time guest with us, would you please acknowledge on the comments section? Want to greet everybody on YouTube and on our Facebook. The same the same rules apply. Put something in the hashtag. The hashtag for me is the new high five for for our uh, social media and our. Um, uh, uh, being online, if you would, our virtual experiences. Amen. We, if we can have a virtual, a virtual birthday and uh, you can have a, a, a virtual uh, Christmas and all these other things, why not a virtual high five? So hashtag is the new virtual high five for us. But nonetheless, if you're a first time guest, if you're someone who is watching us for the first time, from wherever you're viewing from across the country, from Africa, Kenya, Switzerland, Ireland, uh, all across the globe, anywhere from the, anywhere from the United States, we're excited that you're on. We're grateful that you took the time to tune in to our broadcast, and we need to acknowledge you. And we would appreciate it if you would just, in your comments section, just simply say, I'm a first-time guest, and just say where you're from, and we would appreciate that so much. Also. Uh, 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 for those of you that are on, as you're beginning to get on, you see your brothers and sisters. Come on, greet somebody. I always say you never know what this is going to do when you begin to acknowledge your brothers or your sisters as they begin to tune in. And you just saying hi could make their day. Someone may have had a really rough day at work. Someone could have had a really rough day at home. We don't know what people are dealing with, but sometimes the simplest things matter. So come on and greet everybody. Come on and bless somebody and be a blessing to somebody so that, listen, they'll, they'll, they'll know that they are loved and they are appreciated and they are thought of, all right? Uh, also, while we're here, make sure that you leave plenty of comments. And I need everyone that can, everyone that can, please share this broadcast immediately. Share this broadcast immediately. It's important, imperative, so important that you share the broadcast. Help me evangelize. Help me share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because this is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on and share this word with someone this evening. Well, come on, let's get started. Let's get started. Uh, we're still in the book of Genesis, chapter number. I want to go to Genesis, chapter number 28, because there are a couple of scriptures that I am so, so uh, elated about. In Genesis, chapter number 28, uh, down about the 15th verse, at the 15th verse, it says, and this is God talking to Jacob. He says, and behold, I am with thee, and I'm going to keep you, I'm going to keep thee in all the places whither thou goest, and I will, I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to of thee, of. All right, go, go to uh, verse number um, uh, 20, verse number 20. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat 
and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone shall, and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, listen to what he's saying, for all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. That's Jacob talking. The word tenth means tithe. All right. Now, Genesis 29, starting at verse one. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked and behold, uh, and behold, a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. And for out of the, out of out of that well, they watered the flocks and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the all the flocks gathered. They rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep, put and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. And Jacob said unto them, my brethren, whence be ye? And they said of of Haran are we. And he said unto them, no, no, know ye Laban, Laban, the son of Nahor. And they said, we know him. And he said unto them, is he well? And they said, he is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter cometh with the sheep. And he said, lo, it is, it is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep and go and feed them. And they said, we cannot until all the flocks be gathered together until they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. Verse nine. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel. And lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass. Yeah, and it came to pass. When Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's brother, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, surely. Thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him a space of one month. Tonight we're talking about I'm on my way to a win. I'm on my way to a win. I'm on my way to a win. Now listen, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we were in this discussion and have been in this discussion for the last several weeks. I felt it necessary to talk to us about process because what takes place normally when we get a word from the Lord or prophecy or we sense that God wants to do something in our lives, a lot of us, we run ahead with excitement. And there's nothing wrong with running ahead with excitement, but we have the issue. We have the issue of process that seems, that seems to be overlooked because everything takes place in process. The Bible talks about in the book of uh, Genesis, I believe it is chapter number nine. He says, as long as the earth remains, there will always be seed time and harvest. You can't get to a harvest without seed. You can't get the fruition or the maturity of the, what's in the seed unless you have time. So seed time and harvest, summer and winter, day and night. Watch as all these things will continue because this is a part of a process that God has put in place from the foundation of the world. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind that when we begin to look at Genesis chapter number one, particularly when we look at the fourth day, if I'm not mistaken, he says that he made two great lights. And he made two great lights. These two great lights, he, he, he set them in the firmament of the sky. He made two great lights. One, one light, he said, a greater light and um, the lesser light. But they're two great lights. And so the, 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 the lesser light, watch what he does with the lesser light. He puts the lesser light in, 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 the, 
in the dimension of the sky that would receive the night. But then he puts the greater light in the dimension of the sky that rules the day. There's a scripture says that watches work while it's day because night cometh when no man can work. Now that scripture is not applicable, is not applicable in every situation because what he's talking about is when time comes to the end and when God begins to rapture his church from the earth and meet us in the air. But now I want you to keep in mind that there watches there two great lights in Genesis chapter number one on the fourth day. And the four is the number of divine authority and attraction. So there are the north, the south, the east and the west. Four is the number of authority and divine attraction. And so he says, I put two great lights in the sky. The greater light rules the day and the lesser light rules the night. But it's a greater. It's a great light. The lesser light is the moon. The moon gets its reflection from the sun. The both the sun and the moon are set in the firmament of the sky so that the so that the earth would receive. Watch now so that the earth would receive as a as a, as, as according to the rotation, uh, the rotation and the and the axis of different things taking place around the around the sun would receive watches seasons, days, nights and years. It will control how things would begin to manifest. Because when you begin to think about seasons, when we begin to think about days, when we begin to think about nights, when we begin to think about, when we begin to think about months and days, we're thinking about manifestation. We're thinking about things that concern life. And so everything that was in the earth was made first. And then on the sixth day, God made man in his image and after his likeness. I call Genesis chapter number one, verses 26 and 27. I call it the anatomy of dominion. I call it the anatomy of dominion because unless you understand how the anatomy, the anatomy of dominion works, watch this. You cannot uh, success, successfully assail, uh, 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 assail the dimension of the kingdom that God would want you to receive because dominion has this aspect it has fruitfulness connected with it so he said be fruitful listen if i'm going to be fruitful is the first law of increase that we need to identify be fruitful and and multiply and watch this and replenish and subdue so god never wants us to come to a place where we completely consume everything that we have that we don't have the ability to reinvest things or reinvest seed or money into a place so that we can replenish and keep this in mind now this replenishing is so important this replenishing is so important is because god wants you to repeat the same process you just began then he tells us to, us to subdue subduing is about taking control and putting things up under subjection subduing is a militant term which sounds it's a militaristic idea i am going to subdue nations we are going to subdue cities we are going to subdue areas we're going to subdue uh uh, uh neighborhoods but we must subdue them we must subdue them because that is a part of the anatomy of, of dominion. We must take dominion like God has commanded us to take dominion. The earth was made for man. So that means the sun and the moon, the controllers and the dict the controllers, watch this, and the managers of time were made so that man, watch this, so that man would be able to live in the crease and the timing of the kingdom of God. The only way that man missed the timing of God in the beginning was because man began to eat from a tree that they were not supposed to eat from. The sun and the moon were made so man could manage his time properly. But when man falls in the garden, they mismanage their own lives. They mismanage their harvest. And thus they are missing and out of timing with God because the sun and the moon were placed in the firmament of the sky to watch us to control days, months, seasons, times and for signs. All this was in the day on the fourth day. You can read that in the book of Genesis chapter number one. The reason why I'm talking to you about this is because I want you to understand that God has a purpose and a process in mind. 
When we begin to look at Jacob, we begin to identify that there were certain things that Jacob needed to experience. When we get to Genesis chapter number 29, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter number 20, 28 in the, in the, uh, in the uh, 15th verse, and God makes a promise to him. Up above that, he makes promises to Jacob about what he's going to do, how he's going to manifest things in his life. Once again, you cannot run, a, run ahead with excitement, but without understanding, I must go through a process. All right. I cannot run ahead with excitement without understanding that God is going to release me into a process. So Jacob hears all these things. And then finally, God says, watch this. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to walk you, walk with you. I'm going to keep you in all places, wherever you go. I'm going to be there because Jacob, you got to go through some experiences. Watch this, Jacob. You're going to be the, the chief controller of a major corporation called the kingdom of God. You're going to control the family's destiny. We're looking for second and third and fourth generation manifestation in, in, in our profits and losses. I'm going to determine to you that you're going to multiply like the sand that you walk on and the stars in heaven. And I'm going to bless you and every generation after you in their generations. He said, but I want you to understand, I'm not going to leave you until I do it. Somebody needs to get that. Who hashtag? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for not leaving me. The Lord will not leave you until he fulfills what he says. But the problem is when I run ahead with excitement, I can run ahead with excitement. And when I don't understand process, I can meet up with some challenges and get off of the path of excitement and process and miss what the sun and the moon are trying to bring to pass. Stay with me. Stay with me somewhere. I'm going somewhere. So when we get to Genesis chapter number 29, I'm sorry, when we get to Genesis chapter number 28, he promised to give a tenth because he says, watch this, if God is going to keep me in all places that I go, if God is going to do this, I, and, and watch this, and, and, and give me, and give me, and, and shall give me all these things and give me things and help me succeed and help me to accumulate the blessing and the favor on my life, watch this, he promises that he's going to give him a tenth. We equated this with the tenth, the tithe, or the first fruits that we talk about, the first fruits that we talk about in the Bible. We were talking about that, the first fruits and the tithe. They are synonymous one with another. Remember, we're coming up to church anniversary. We always give our first fruits at church anniversary. It's nothing more than an extra tithe. You should have already been setting that aside. Setting that aside so when, you, when it's time to give it, you won't feel the strain because the first fruits, watch this, the first fruits is, watch this, is a symbol of the harvest that is coming. It does not rep represent the harvest past. It represents the harvest coming. And I want this first fruits. I want the harvest that's coming and that's manifesting. I want it to look like the fruit that I'm carrying right now. I want the first fruits to identify, to signify where God is taking me. All right. So if you want God to repeat what he's doing, if you want God to improve on what he's doing, because watch this. Yeah, God, I hear you. Jesus is God's first fruit. God so loved the world that he gave. I'm going somewhere. And he gave his first fruit when he gave his first fruit. The Bible says in the book of first Corinthians, I believe, chapter number 15 somewhere. It says that Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. Hallelujah. Which means Jesus is the first fruit. When Jesus dies on the cross and he resurrects, when he resurrects and his spirit man, the Christ man, the anointed, the Messiah, when he reaches from the earth to the heavens, the Bible says that the, the, the veil from the temple opens from top to bottom. When it opens from top to bottom, there's an earthquake. Why is there an earthquake? Because something from the heavens has opened up the earth. And when it opens up the earth, something that is in the earth is now released into the manifestation of the atmosphere in which people can see. Things that were left dormant now become alive. I prophesy to you right now. I prophesy to you that watch this, hallelujah, I hear you God, that this year I prophesy to you by the apostolic mantle of my life, that watch this, that dormant things are coming to life.
that promise, that dream, that vision, that strategy, whatever it is that was dormant. I decree and declare and I speak life to you in every dead area, every buried place, every place where that has been hidden from your sight will now move from vision to sight. Because he says you walk by faith and not by sight. Your journey is a walk by faith, but you are going to receive something that you can see and, and hold on to tangibly. Because God wants to bring your life or your visions, wants to bring things from vision to sight. Now stay with me. Oh God, thank you. Jesus is the first fruits. Everything that comes after Jesus needs to look like Jesus is the harvest that God sowed for because he cannot violate, watch this, he cannot violate uh, earthly law with spiritual things. He must operate in earthly law with the spiritual things so he can receive a earthly manifestation that's a result of a spiritual law. Because in the beginning, God designed things to happen as a result of spiritual law. But when man messed up in the garden, when man messed up in the garden, the Bible says the earth was cursed. So in order to recover the earth, watch this, and man into fellowship and relationship, he had to operate, watch this, in earthly law. So he sends his first fruits in through a woman who has never been touched. She is a first fruit manifestation. She houses the fruit. She carries the fruit. She gives birth to the fruit. And as a result of that, he is the seed that goes on the cross. He dies. The first fruit dies. And as a result, watch this. The Bible says, lest the seed fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. Now watch. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere because I got to get y'all into my next point. But since Jesus was the first fruits, when he comes out of the tomb, when he comes out of the tomb, he tells Mary, don't touch me. It's not that he couldn't be touched, per se, is that you can't handle me the way you used to. You can't handle my life the way you used to. I have come. I have come back with a greater dimension on me. Moses goes up. He is a first fruits to Israel. He goes up and gets into the presence of God. When he comes back, he has so much glory on him that they have to cover him because they can't, They are not going to be able to handle the glory. Jesus is a type of Moses. He is wrapped up in flesh. He is God wrapped up in flesh. And he is the covering because we cannot handle the pure, raw essence of God and his glory. Stay with me right through here. Now watch. Now watch now. So I gave you a couple points last week. And Jacob said, I'm going to give the tenth. I vow, a vow to give the tenth. I'm going to give my first fruit. We read Hannah, 1 Samuel chapter number 1. Let me show you something real quick. I don't think I pulled it out on Sunday, but let me see if I can't uh, find it to pull it out now to see if it can be helpful to you. Hopefully it can. All right. And then I'm going to get out your way here. 1 Samuel chapter number. Let's go to chapter number two. Now, remember, Hannah didn't have no children. So God gives her supernatural breakthrough because he shut her womb. Her timing has come. And she promises, she makes a vow that I will give my child back to the Lord first fruit. So first child, first fruit. Now watch what happens. Verse, chapter 2, verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceedingly proud, uh, uh, exceeding proudly let not arrogancy come out of your mouth for the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed 
the bows of the the bow the bows the bows of the mighty men are broken and they that stumbled are girded with strength that they were full that they that were full have hired out themselves for bread they that were hungry ceased so that hallelujah so that the barren have borne seven y'all didn't hear what i just said and she that had many children is wax feeble the lord killeth and maketh alive he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the princes. And he make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. He, he will keep the feet of his saints uh, uh, and, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength no man prevaileth the adversaries of the lord shall be broken to pieces out of the heaven shall he he thunder upon them the lord shall shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed Woo. and elkanah went to ramoth to his house and could and and, and the child did minister unto the lord before Eli the priest. And so it says back here, watch this, watch what it says. Watch what it says now. Watch what it says. Verse 2, there is none holy but the Lord, neither any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bow, the bow, the bow, the, the bows of the mighty men are broken. And they that stumble are girded with strength that 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 I'm sorry. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread and they that were hungry cease so that the barren have born seven. So Hannah has seven children because she sows one. First fruits, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So she does the same thing that Jacob does. She makes a vow. Okay, now let's get to some of our points, all right, because I want to teach you something, all right. The first thing we looked at last week is that when Jacob starts out on his journey, he has been given what I call a leadership instruction. He has been given what I call a leadership instruction. In the book of Psalms 37, verse number 23, it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Ordered, ordered implies some level of instruction is given, some level of command is given, all right? Listen, without a instruction, without a instruction, without leadership instruction, without following a simple instruction, she does not, he does not receive the next thing that he receives. He receives opportunity because out of the instruction comes the opportunity. Remember, what's embedded in an instruction is a divine appointment. All right, is a divine appointment. What's embedded in the instruction is a divine appointment. We found out here in, in, in Genesis chapter number 29. We'll start at verse number, number nine. I'm sorry, verse number four. Jacob said unto them, my brethren, whence be ye? And they said, of Haran are we. Now watch what he says in verse number five. And he said unto them, know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, we know him. So automatically the people that, that, that are divinely orchestrated to be at the well is, watch this, are people from Haran and people who know, who know Laban, Nahor, and Laban, Nahor's uh, uh, son of Nahor. Now watch what's happening now. He is not sure where he's at. But God has divinely, divinely orchestrated him to be at a place so he can fulfill the rest of the journey. Process. Process, ladies and gentlemen, process. We're looking at process. Number one, he receives a leadership instruction. His father says, I want you to go to Laban's house. Don't go get no, he's got to go find a wife. Do not stop in Canaan. Do not take a wife from Canaan because the women of Canaan 
are set aside for destruction. They are set aside for instruction. They are not going to be able to live up to the level of expectation or promise that you need. There is no de there is no destiny. There is no there is no there is no posterity for them. There is no legacy left for them. Canaan is going to be removed. Canaan now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Canaan, Canaan is a result of Canaan is a result of watch now. Canaan is a result of a son who slept with Noah's wife. So God said, I can't let that thing live on. I ain't got time to get into it. All right. But nonetheless, Isaac gives Jacob instruction. He follows this instruction. He's on this journey towards in this instruction. Part of the divine appointment was he lights upon a place and the Lord comes to talk to him. The ladder steps up and reaches from the earth to the heavens and angels are revealed in that place. And he understands that watches. I'm getting ready to journey into something, but I'm coming back to this place. Promises are given when I follow a simple instruction. Watch this. Where, where, are you, where have you been instructed to be at church? Where have you been, been instructed to sit up under leadership? God didn't ask you if you like leadership. He didn't ask you what color the leadership was. He said, are you up under the leader I've instructed you to be up under? You don't find a church like you're looking for a mall. You go where God has designed you to watch this, to progress and flourish. Uh oh. I don't want to talk about that because y'all going to get mad at me. Somebody put in the hashtag be in the place of flourishing. Be in the place of flourishing. Here's what's really crazy about that. Here's what I think is pretty crazy is that there's a parable in the Bible that talks about a tree that wasn't bearing fruit and the owner of the vineyard was coming to pull the tree out, take it out of the vineyard and, and cast it out. But the individual, the husbandman said, hold on. Let me work with it for about a year. Now watch what happens. He said, let me dig around it and then let me put some dung around the roots and let's see what will happen with it. Because sometimes you need to be in the place that challenges you. That watch, y'all not going to really like this. I, I know this is, I know this is um, going to be very sensitive. You don't go to a church to get a title. You don't search around for a place to get a title. You go where you flourish. You go where God has commanded you to flourish. Because just because a you have a title doesn't mean you're maturing. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just letting you know. Matter of fact, <laughs> it's just a true reality. So he dungs it. He puts dung around it. And the Bible says that the tree flourished the next year. Why? Because it was assigned to a certain dimension of soil. There's a certain level of soil. There's a there's ground that's conducive to your productivity. You're looking for friends. God says, no, I need you to be a disciple. You might not always you might not always like the instruction. You might not like always like what's being taught you. You might not always like some of the things that are being said. Jesus would say stuff to him like, oh, you have no faith. You don't see him throwing their hands up. Listen to me. Let me get on with this. So we see Jacob traveling in Genesis chapter number 29. The first thing we see in verses four and five is that we see that he has followed a, a leadership instruction. We see that once he gets there, that watch this, there is a divine opportunity embedded in the instruction that he connects with people who can continue to confirm the journey that he's on. All right. Now I want to get to number three. 
Number three, watch this. God <laughs> has to put you in position to receive passion. God puts you in position to receive passion. So let's read on here. Verse number six. And he said unto them, is he well? They said he is well. And verse number six in the latter portion said, and behold, watch what happens. Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. And he said, lo, it is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep and go and feed them. And they said, we cannot until all the flocks be gathered together and together and the flocks be gathered together until they uh, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. So now they're trying to show Jacob. Listen, I watch now. Watch this, guys. Watch this now. My passion does not override protocol. He puts him in a place of passion, but passion does not override protocol. They can't roll the stone away because, because of his passion. His passion must be subject to protocol. Lord, have mercy. God, I wish I had somebody in front of me to talk to. Passion must be subject to protocol. So God, <laughs> watch this now. Number three, passion must be subject to to protocol. You might be passionate about something, but are you doing it with protocol? You're passionate about evangelism, but but does the house you're in do evangelism the way you want to do it? Or have you gotten or have you gotten permission to do evangelism? Watch this. You got you got ministry in you. You got a passion for something. But it still doesn't override protocol. Hmm. I'm passionate about youth ministry, but what does youth ministry look like in the place that God has assigned you? Got to have passion and protocol. Passion, protocol. His passion says, come on, hurry up, roll the stone away because I want to get to the rest of the fulfillment of the process. They said, no, 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 that's not how we do this. We can't, we can't have your passion caused us to be premature just because you got an emotional, you have an emotional uh, burst of energy. Watch, guys. Watch what happens here. Verse number Listen to him. Listen, listen, to, uh, listen to Jacob. And he said, lo, it is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep and go and feed them. Verse 8. And they said, we cannot until all the flocks be gathered together and until they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then protocol we water the sheep i cannot accelerate this portion of the process because your passion does not dictate how protocol is carried out zeal without knowledge in the book of first samuel um, there were two, two generals, one's Abner, one is Joab. Abner had a brother, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Joab had a brother. Joab had a brother who, the Bible says he ran like a gazelle. Which means in the middle of military, in the, mil in the middle of military assaults, he was used to run messages back and forth from one place to the next. But this particular time, he Second uh, Samuel chapter number uh, two, three, and four. Read them through that when you get a chance. He runs after one of the generals called Abner. Abner, watch this. Abner, watch guys. 
Abner is a bad boy in his own right. And here it is that Joab's brother is chasing after Abner. He's chasing after Abner, talking about he wants to fight, but he has no sword. And Abner turns to him and says, listen, hey, man, you are operating out of protocol. There's no honor in this for me in fighting you. If I kill you, there's no honor here. There's no glory for me as a soldier because you don't have a sword. You have a message, but you don't. I'm talking to a preacher now. I'm talking to a preacher. You might have a message, but you don't have a mantle. Just because you can preach doesn't mean you operate in leadership. You have no sword. You got a message without a mantle. And when you have a message without a mantle, you're sure to find yourself to meet up with some level of devastation. Lord, have mercy. Hmm. You got a message, but no mantle. They want us to they want us to over want you to override override protocol because you're passionate. We can't override protocol just because you're passionate. Just because you have a feeling. Protocol. Comes before passion. Even though passion is real protocol puts passion in perspective. Watch. Stay with me. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Watch what happens. Verse number seven. And he said, lo, it is yet high day. Verse eight. And they said, we cannot. Verse nine. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep. For she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, passion, his mother's brother and the sheep of and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. So watch this. When I allow protocol to harness my passion, my passion should translate into servanthood. Lord, have mercy. My passion should translate into servanthood. If I have a passion, I should be passionate about serving. In the book of John, chapter number one, the miracle, the first miracle of Jesus, they arrived to a wedding at Canaan of Galilee. They get there and the disciples are there with Jesus. But Mary, Jesus' mother, is there. And the Bible says something, watch this, the Bible says something, they had run out of wine. Hallelujah, I hear you, God. They had run out of wine, and because they had run out of wine, they, they listen, they come to Mary, Mary says, listen, they done ran out of wine because Mary understands intercession. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize. <clears throat> Mary understands intercession. Because as an intercessor, you don't have to wait for somebody to tell you there's an issue. As an intercessor, I have a prophetic alert, a discernment of what's going on in the atmosphere. See, oh God, I need to teach on this. Intercessors are supposed to detect when the celebration is being affected, when the atmosphere of the celebration is affected, when there's no wine, a real intercessor will begin to kick in and start to pray to Jesus. Because Jesus, watch this, is birthed by a woman who's an intercessor. 
when, when Mary births Jesus, she births a move of God. Watch. Stay with me right through here. Stay with me. Stay with me. Watch what happens because they don't come to Mary. Mary goes to Jesus. So if you're a real intercessor, if you're a real intercessor, you are on high alert when in your house, whatever church you go to, whatever, whatever time you guys meet, if you're not aware of when the celebration is affected, when the atmosphere and the celebration is affected, you're not an effective, you're not an effective intercessor. You are not an effective intercessor until you recognize when the atmosphere is affected in the celebration. Because when there is no wine, there's going to be a halt in the celebration. So Jesus prays, watch this, Mary prays to Jesus. And she tells him, they have no wine. He says, listen, what, what do I have to do with this? I ain't got nothing to do with this. Mary, in intercession, in prayer, do what he tells you to do. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. All of a sudden, he tells the servants because the servants are recipients of the interworkings of a miracle. Fill up the water pots with water. Fill up the water pots with water. <clears throat> Watch now. Fill up the water pots with water. The servants do it. They pour out what's in the water pots into the wineskins or whatever. And they see they draw out from the water pots, the water that's turned into wine. Says he pours out the governor of the house is excited about the celebration. The atmosphere shifts again. And he says, I don't know what y'all did. But normally they put out the good wine first, but you saved the best for last. So we'll get back to more of this. So my passion should translate into servanthood. Jacob immediately sees her and rolls the stone away and waters all of her flocks. Why? Because my passion should translate into servanthood. I want to be blessed, then serve. I want to increase, then serve. I'm waiting for overflow, then serve. All right, God bless you. My time is up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so glad we had the opportunity to share uh, this time together. Listen, as a reminder, uh, we, have, we have a, uh, a new website. I need everyone that can go visit the new website. If you haven't downloaded the app, please go to uh, uh, either Android, I mean, to your uh, Google store or uh, wherever you get your app, your app store, whether it's um, Apple products and or Android products, you can, you can download the app right there. It looks just like the one you see on the screen, the heart down to the right, uh, the right uh, area. Please go and download the app. Amen. We're so we're so excited about this app. Please download it. Also, <clears throat> tonight, listen, we've been giving, we've been giving for the last several weeks with something with a two on it. Something with a two. All right? Give something with a two if you can. Amen. Some do 20, some do 200, some do 2,000. I don't know what God will lay on your heart. Somebody might want to sow 2 million. Amen. And you should receive that because God will take you to that level. But go ahead and sow your seed tonight. There are three ways that you can give. There's Give the Five, PayPal, and Cash App. They're right there on the screen. To our first time guests, thank you so much for tuning in with us. Right there, uh, thank you for tuning in with us. As a reminder, please, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube and on Facebook, our giving instructions are right at the top of the screen. If you're a first time guest, please make sure that you uh, let us know who you are and where you're from. We're, we're so grateful that you took the time to tune in with us. Thank you. 
uh, for your time tonight. This is Bishop Michael Anthony from the Heart of God Family Worship Center at 201 North Hanover Street in the great city of Pottstown, Pennsylvania, the place where comebacks are possible. The place where comebacks are possible. Please, please come join us. Come be our guest this Sunday. And be our guest this Sunday. Come experience the very power of God. And come and be our guests here at the Heart of God Family Worship Center. We're a real church, serving real people with real problems, offering a real solution.